Okay, we're going to talk about four jaw chucks today. Four jaw chucks take a little more time than just tossing something in a three jaw. But in a three jaw, besides the accuracy of the part, the uh, chuck, it also depends on the accuracy of the piece. If this is out around, you throw it in a three jaw, it's going to run out around. If you have a part that is a little bit oval, it's worn down a little here, worn down a little, worn down a little everywhere, and we put it in a four jaw, it will still want to run out, but if we have the same reading here and here and here and here in four points, we have a better average of round than we do with just the three points. Now, one that's automatic and a lot of people use is a six jaw chuck, and a six jaw chuck is great for giving you an average, especially used on thin material because that will give you six points that pull in on your tubing and you're gonna bend your tubing as you tighten it down uh, if it's a good accurate six jaw. They also make six jaw and three jaw and, uh, chucks and scroll chucks for four jaws. There's also four jaws that are scrolls. We've got one of those over here. What we don't have, we don't have the four jaw scroll that's also adjustable. And one I used to have and was real popular in the late 70s, early 80s, they were in all kinds of shops, but I haven't seen them for a long time, for sale or anything, is a three jaw chuck or six jaw chuck with adjustable jaws on top of it. And that was, that were scroll chucks. And so that was pretty handy. That gave you the quick adjustment, but you could still tweak it a little bit. Uh, it also is a pain because having the extra moving pieces, the three jaw, the six jaw, they were always off. They were never dead on, but you could quickly get close and then make your final adjustments and make it dead, dead on at that point. Now, on your four jaw, besides the, the uh, chuck itself, you got rings back here. In this case, those rings aren't gonna do us a whole lot of good um, initially for lining up because this piece is pretty close to the center. You can kind of eyeball the rings, but it doesn't give you a lot of help. There is on a lot of four jaws, and they're different, the chuck jaw itself that happens to be on your four jaw. If you have ones that have really sharp serrations, and hopefully it doesn't have a serration right in the middle of the jaw, but some do, um, hopefully the very middle of the jaw is flattish like this. Now, on these ones here, which are pretty common on import lathes these days, um, besides new, new some of the other uh, four jaws too, the Polish ones. Relatively smooth, just a nice curved jaw. It's not gonna grab as good as the ones with the big serrations, but there's an extra benefit besides the fact of not tearing up your work. Put your stock in there and let your stock roll and just kind of center. Now you can notice that, that I'm above center here yet, but I'm closer to knowing where center is than if I had no guide at all. So I can run this in, bring it almost into touch, then turn 90 degrees, do the same thing again. Let it set in there, come in. This time I'll come even closer. And then on the next one, I come up here and I'll let it set and then I'll bring it over and I'll touch. And then the next one after that, Let it roll back a little bit, touch it. Now I'm gonna tighten the other two. And that gets you somewhere in the ballpark just to start with. And we will see how far off we are just by that little trick or technique. It's only a trick if you're trying to fool someone. And if you're trying to fool yourself, it's a bad technique. So we are out, uh, we're at 90, we're out quite a bit yet. Yeah, we're out over a hundred thousandths, but still gets us somewhere in there. So I like to pick whichever two jaws are the most apart. That one is at zero. This one's long ways back to minus a whole bunch. So I'm gonna go somewhere around 50. That one there. Semi close. This one here needs to go looser again. It needs to be tighter, looser, tighter. Then you see how it 
wobbled when I uh, let everything loose. So as you get in closer to um, actually getting it dialed in, you want to leave a little tension on your jaws. You don't want to let them totally get loose as you start getting in close to your final adjustment. But there we got 57, 62. So I'm going to tighten that one down to 60. That leaves a little bit off pressure. I'm getting close. I'm at 59 and 60 now. So I go on the other side to get down to 61. The reason I went to 61 was because it was getting tight. So now I'll come to the other side and I'll actually loosen it a little bit, but we've got enough snugness, not loosening it all the way, but loosening up. So now I'm at 59, but now it's sort of loose. I'm just barely over. If I bring this down about an eighth of a thousandth, pretty close to 59 on both sides, just under there, come back to this one. And we're pretty much dialed in. We could get it more accurate if we want, but we're within, within a half. And I don't know how long that part took there, but I think if we, I think if we negated the getting it generally set in there, I think that could be a short of dialing one in. I mean, you can do it that quick, you know, and you can do it that quick over and over after you've done it for a while. The first, um, when do you know that you've had enough practice? Make yourself use the four jaw time and time again, even when you don't want to, so that it becomes something that you can quickly use when you need to, up until the point that you would rather put the stock that's round, just a normal piece of stock, that you'd rather put it in a four jaw rather than change the chuck to a three jaw. When you get to the point that it's more beneficial to you just to use it for the one piece instead of wanting to change chucks, then you know you've had enough experience on the four jaw where you at least are, are functional with it. Before that, keep forcing yourself to use it when you don't want to, because you really need to get a little experience with it. Now, another thing with four jaws, which they're really cool tools. We don't have to stop with round parts. I might want to do a piece of square stock. Can't put a piece of square stock in a three jaw and while you could put a piece of square stock in six jaws you're not going to put it in six independent jaws and that's something if you have a hard piece of material to think of too when you're on a six jaw chuck like I said it's really common place it's used a lot of times and they narrow down the jaws are used a lot on, on weaker pieces but if you're using it on something that's really, really strong and you're chucking in, and it's the same thing with a scroll four jaw, which we know we got some over here. Mm, there's one hiding in there. <laughs> I don't know if there's much light to see it. Can't really tell a whole lot about it, but there's one down there. Uh, might want to dig it out for some other reason because that they have points to all of these different ones have different points but we're talking about four jaws today mostly but anyway what happens you have a, a chuck with more than three jaws and you're chucking down on something solid when it hits those three jaws it's done that's it you got six of them but it's going to pick maybe one over here and it may not be just three on a triangle but it's going to pick ones that get tight first and the others are going to stay loose if it's not absolutely perfectly round with perfectly new jaws, with a perfect scroll. If there's any inaccuracy and everything's solid, it's only gonna grab on the three points. It's the fact of using it with tubing and things that bend a little bit is where it gives you extra support and helps make up for the fact if you just had three points, it'd start uh, pushing out in between the three points. It'd push on three points and then this would get longer. You could run an indicator there and it'd push it out. Well, with six, you're still going to have little bumps in between, but they're less than with just the uh, three points. Now, on the four jaw scroll chuck, and we will, we will want to dig okay, that. We've got this four jaw scroll chuck here. These all suck in together. Um, whichever one comes tight first is the ones that will tighten up. The other ones can be loose. Had a chuck at a shop many years ago that we had actually a chuck just like this. We had to use it a lot. It was welded onto the machine. Machine had a bad spindle, they had a bad chuck, they welded the two together and it was pathetic, but uh, we used it for very rough work. Uh, we actually called it a driveline lathe to some extent because drivelines are normally not as accurate as some other stuff you do. 
Anyway, what I was doing with this, these plates are for a portion of a circle. Those make up the portion of a circle that we milled out. And then we would take two halves of a round and we were turning it again after they were hardened. We'd re return the two halves that we had milled and these plates would go in between. This is two of them. We lost one. That's why there's two of them that we keep with the chuck. And what we would do is a half of the round fit on two chucks, two chuck jaws over here. A half of it went over here. So the two could roll a little bit to make up so that you've got pressure on all four jaws. So that's where that really worked good with that scroll chuck. But back here to our square stock. So probably pick just the 